Hello and welcome to the first episode in a new series for my channel. I'll be discussing what makes some lenses great in a shorter, sharper, more contrasty way than 20 to 30 minute long reviews. I hope you enjoy the lenses I'll be reviewing on digital cameras and I'll sometimes feature their original cameras as well as they can be part of the story too. And what better place to start than the Tear 3S? This 300mm lens is one of my favourite telephoto lenses, but it's often overlooked as a lens in its own right because it's coupled with one of the most extraordinary pieces of camera gear ever sold to the public. Not everyone is comfortable with the photo sniper's gun-like appearance, but if you actually use it as a photographic tool, it begins to make a lot more sense. Now it's customary for new gear reviews to start with the unboxing. This can be rather boring, but for the Tear 3S kit, unboxing provides a totally unique experience. My version of the kit is called the Photo Sniper 12. It was made in the USSR up to around 2005. It was originally packaged in a cardboard box, and inside the box you get a military-style metal case that wouldn't look out of place with combat gear dealers. The contents include a Photo Sniper service passport, a Zenit 12S camera, the lens and the rest of the kit, and some other goodies. It's a relatively easy task to assemble the kit into the camera gun with the right connections. Once it's together and you've loaded some film, you can take a shot by pulling the trigger, just like a gun. Wind on the film and you can take another shot. On the inside of the lid, there are coloured filters, tools and attachments for storing film cartridges. The kit also includes a Helios 58mm f2 lens. Earlier versions had a Helios 44 2 This one is a Helios 44 m4. A good lens for taking close-up, sharp snaps of your prey, no doubt. I don't believe these lenses were heroed for swirly bouquet back in those days. Turning to the lens itself, it's a 300mm f4.5 lens with an M42 mount, so it's easily adapted to modern digital cameras, although it's quite a hefty weight. The design has a relatively simple three elements in three groups, and it has an impressive 16 aperture blades. I don't know what the coatings are, but the glass has a strong purple tint. The blades are controlled by a slightly awkward to use aperture dial. It has a very clunky stop-down arrangement. A more effective and unusual feature of the lens is the focus mechanism. You don't focus the lens by rotating the barrel. You use this knob under the lens. The lens comes with a rubber hood. It looks like it could double up as a plunger for unblocking drains, useful if you're scouting around damaged buildings. On digital cameras with just the lens, you can use it handheld or on a tripod. All that's left of the film camera attachments is this loose wire. Optically, the lens is rather good for its age especially when it has a steady platform. And that, of course, is the beauty of the photo sniper setup. You can secure the lens using the gun holster up against your shoulder and gently press the trigger to activate the shutter. My daughter and I got some pretty odd looks from passers-by when we were shooting these snaps. Normally when I'm using a strange-looking camera in public, a few people will come up and ask me what it is, but for this gear, people definitely kept their distance. Attached to a digital camera, leaving aside its weight, which seems to increase the longer you're out with the lens, the lens is quite usable as a handheld walk-around. You don't actually need a tripod all the time. With my camera's shape reduction or IBIS systems, I don't take too many unusable out-of-focus images, unlike the 500mm mirror lens I tried recently. 300mm is an impressive length for longer distance shots, as you can see from these comparisons. You can use it for a variety of types of photography, as I'll illustrate with a few examples. While we're looking at these photos, I should say I do like the focus knob. It gives a very precise touch, and if you hold the knob when you're taking a photo, it helps to stabilize the kit. When you nail the focus, both wide open and stop down, the center of the images are nice and sharp. On the downside, the lens lacks some contrast, but a contrast and color boost can improve the images considerably. Or you can go for high contrast black and white processing. Wide open, there's quite a lot of chromatic aberrations in bright light, both purple and green fringing, so it needs stopping down to try to avoid this situation. The lens's minimum focusing distance is 3 meters, which doesn't sound so good, but given its 300 millimeter reach, it is possible to produce closer up shots with a very narrow depth of field. 
you can get some lovely out of focus blur and transitions when the foregrounds and backgrounds are uncluttered. The lens copes well with busy backgrounds, rendering attractive, smoothed out results. I particularly like the big round bubbles the lens produces where there are highlights in the frame. And the large number of blades helps to keep smooth edges to these bubbles when you stop down. Indeed, stopping down from f4.5 to, say, f8, you still get a lot of good blur and bubbles, useful if you want to maximise the sharpness of in-focus subjects, but retain a blurry background. Finally, back to the purple tint in the glass I mentioned at the beginning. This isn't a factor for many images. However, I have noticed a slight purple coloration to darker areas of some compositions. In this straight out of camera photo jet black railings, for example, there is definitely a purplish hue to them, but it's easy to adjust in post processing. So, in conclusion, a good lens, but what makes it great is the kit. I think it's safe to say that we'll never see its likes sold to the general public again. Generals, maybe, but not the public. Please let me know what you think of this lens, and if you like the idea of a series of shorter, sharper reviews. Please also subscribe if you haven't already done so. As well as reviews, I'll be covering some other photography-related topics. So until the next time, all the best.